When we think of movie villains, we often think of the mustache twirling baddie who plans for world domination, who is up to no good. However, some memorable villains are also those of an element of realism, and not too far removed from those we encounter in reality. Those can really get under our skin, and become even more despicable and hateable than iconic characters like the Joker or Darth Vader. They usually are not trying to take over the world, but instead more conniving in their ways and how they plot things out. They can usually be seen in dramas, but they can show up in fantasy films too. The first villain I even thought of for this video topic was actually Dolores Umbridge in Harry Potter. Yes, the big bad of the series is Lord Voldemort, a more traditional villain. However, most readers of the books and viewers of the film adaptations will often cite Umbridge as the most detestable character to set foot in Hogwarts. That's for good reason. We've all encountered people put on a sunny disposition, but actually heartless and prejudiced bullies underneath. Her constant contempt for Harry for speaking the truth about the return of Voldemort and continually punishing him for it adds to what makes her so hateable. She uses her power to try and control the narrative around the school and stop students from thinking for themselves. Imelda Stodden did a particularly good job of portraying Umbridge's two-faced personality in the movies. A similar villain in a more realistic setting is Nurse Ratched in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. As played on screen by Louise Fletcher, she treats the patients in the psychiatric hospital like children, and she seems to enjoy the authoritarian power she has over them. Even though a sense of order is necessary when running such an environment, she takes things to extremes, especially with her obvious manipulation of everyone in there. Fletcher played the character of a coldness, especially the way she looked at the patients with contempt and her annoyance at them finding a semblance of joy from Randall McMurphy's actions. Ratchet, in her own twisted way, thinks she is actually helping the patients with her treatment of them and talking down to them. She also likes that power, and that's what makes her a chilling and realistic villain. In the financial world, Gordon Gekko in Wall Street is usually cited as a realistic depiction of a corporate raider. He was an example of the desire for wealth in the 1980s, which is also shown in the way he plays into Bud Fox's admiration film to become even richer through any means necessary. He is shown as having no sympathy for anyone who might become unemployed because of his actions, and he famously proudly states that greed is good. Oliver Stone based Gecko on real Wall Street types, and used his knowledge and research of the stock market and those who control it to bring realism to the character. While Gecko is the movie's antagonist, there were many on Wall Street who did not see him as a cautionary tale, but rather someone to aspire to. Michael Douglas has said he's often surprised by people working in finance who say that Gordon Gecko is the reason they got into their profession. He would then ask them, you do know he's the villain, right? 80s movies have their fair share of corporate villains like Gecko, and another notable example I can think of is Burke in Aliens. Working for the Wayland yutani Corporation, he knows the real reason Ripley and the Marines have been sent to the colony. Why are they there? To get the alien eggs and use them for profit. That Burke starts the film is seemingly helpful before his true intentions are revealed adds to the dislike of that character, and Paul Reiser manages to portray him in a realistic manner. Yes, the xenomorphs are more bloodthirsty and likely dangerous, but to quote Ripley, I don't know which species is worse. At least you don't see them effing each other over for a percentage. I've sometimes seen villains motivated by profit and money criticized as boring, but the truth is many people do exist in the world who do something evil malicious just to fill their pockets. It's said that fact is often stranger than fiction. We've certainly seen actual bad people in the real world whose actions would have seemed unbelievable if we saw them in a movie or television show like those movies where the politician or military general completely ignores the warnings of the scientist who is clearly the smartest person in the room. However, the past few years have shown this to be all too common. It was even the premise of Don't Look Up, which real scientists have praised as an accurate portrait of what they have to deal with. Biopics can sometimes run into the issue where the real-life events are so far-fetched that they're required to alter the story, so the audience still finds it plausible and believable. I remember a few reviews of Big Eyes calling Christoph Waltz over the top for his portrayal of Walter Keane. However, the filmmakers have said their depiction of him was actually toned down from the real person. The courtroom scene where he serves his own lawyer was just the tip of the iceberg of the real Keane's outlandish behavior. If Waltz, Tim Burton, and screenwriters Scott Alexander and Larry Karaszewski included more of what Keane was really like, they worry that the audience would accuse them of going overboard. The thing is, quirky people do exist in real life, and that has certainly informed some movie villains, even ridiculous ones. Jesse Eisenberg's performance as Lex Luthor in Batman vs Superman was criticized as an absurd depiction of a billionaire, but in a world where Elon Musk is spending $44 billion to buy Twitter on a whim, and naming his child after a mathematical formula, his Luthor does not seem that out of the ordinary. Of course, for more nuanced portrayal of a calculating billionaire played by Eisenberg, we have Mark Zuckerberg in The Social Network. 
The film depicts him as someone willing to step over others to take Facebook to the next level, including his best friend Eduardo Severin. The film reportedly exaggerated a lot of elements related to the real creation of Facebook, and Zuckerberg is apparently not as cold as portrayed in the movie, but this depiction of the young billionaire nonetheless made for compelling and believable drama. Although, considering everything that has happened with him and the website since the film's release, it would be interesting to see where a sequel would go. Both Jesse Eisberg and Aaron Sorkin have expressed the desire to make one. So as you can see, there are multiple ways in which to write an antagonist or a villain that's easy to hate and could also exist in the real world. After all, writers and filmmakers are known to take inspiration from real people when creating them. Norman Bates, one of the most iconic horror characters of all time, was inspired by real-life serial killer Ed Gein. Emperor Palpatine in the Star Wars movies is obviously an outlandish character, with his over-the-top persona, cackling under his hood, and having lightning shoot out of his fingers. However, George Lucas has also been open about how Richard Nixon was a primary influence when he created Palpatine, and what makes his rise to power in the prequels so scary and plausible are the clear historical parallels to Hitler. To conclude, it's all about the execution, whether you're portraying a real-life figure, a science fiction villain, or a fictional character in a realistic setting. As long as you can imagine an actual person with those motives and willingness to do those evil deeds, any villain can seem real. See you next time.